Okay, greetings and welcome to another Grenfell Meet Watch update. Today's edition I want to call 13 years and three months. So, where do we start? Well, to be honest with you, I mean, we're called Grenfell Media Watch, but it's quite obvious to all of us that the media really hasn't been investigating Grenfell anymore. They haven't really been looking for new stories and most of the reporting has come based on the inquiry. I mean, we're almost an inquiry watch group, but that's not 100% the truth. And let me elaborate here. So if we start with the inquiry and discuss what's been turned up, well, we know the focus is still on the firefighters and call handlers. And uh, there's some harrowing tales about how some of the residents were not told. This is after the stay put policy had been canceled. They weren't told that they should leave. We're also hearing that um, 999 callers having to hang up on families who are dying, who are in distress. So other than the testimony that we're getting from witnesses at the inquiry, there's not really much news. And this is really, really problematic. What we're also learning now is that when the families do actually ask for concessions from the inquiry, I think in this case, it was a, a possible change of venue, one that was more accessible, and, and really more importantly, the ability to actually pose questions to some of the witnesses through their own lawyers, and so not them personally, but through their own lawyers, Morbik's been denying them. He's been saying no. This should be setting off alarm bells. You see, because I don't know about you, I grew up on programs like LA Law and a lot of things like Boston Legal and Suits and all these kind of law dramas. And you see, by doing it this way, the inquiry's making sure there's never one of those gotcha moments. And I don't know if you know what I'm talking about. It's when someone's on the stand giving evidence and they get caught out in a lie. And a smart solicitor, a smart barrister, can actually pick up on that lie and give us a stream of follow-up questions which reveals the truth. You're not gonna get that in the inquiry because the family of solicitors cannot ask questions to the core participants, to the witnesses. And so it makes you think, what's the point? And so if we're gonna discuss what progress has been made, okay, well, the government's consultation uh, on a ban on uh, cladding or flammable cladding was actually closed. It closed around a month ago. Have you heard anything? No, I haven't heard anything. I think there was one BBC London programme that reported something about some ministers are going around private landlords telling them to do the right thing. I mean, you know, kind of like, you know, please, please do the right thing. These are government ministers, you know. I heard that in Newport in Wales, that one of their largest social housing bodies has been given three million pounds uh, by the Welsh government. And they're actually in the process of removing cladding. So this is something that's kind of like limited to England when I'm talking about this lack of interest, this lack of urgency, this lack of willingness to actually make their own residents, make their own citizens safe. The government has set up uh, a memorial program or memorial commission or whatever they want to call it this week because clearly they believe it's time that we forget about the Grenfell victims. I mean everything's fine now and it's time to move on to establish the legacy through memorial. Um, I think we've seen the BBC joining in this effort with its DIY SOS program and you know everything's hunky-dory now they've built a, a boxing gym and a community centre I mean, who cares that 84 out of the 204 are still living in uh, emergency and temporary accommodation? But this reduction in campaign investigative journalism has led to a bizarre scenario where I'm going to have to big up the Daily Mail and you know how that sticks in my throat for actually publishing their idea, the 30 faults that led to Grenfell. And I'm not saying they're writing all accounts but at least they're keeping that focus in the public eye, which is something that all media organisations should be doing. And so I want to close with this. In 2010, the independent newspaper published an article, something along the lines of what's the purpose of a public inquiry? And you can find that by going online. But what was interesting about that in that article was it highlighted a few facts. That the shortest UK public inquiry is 45 days and that the longest is 13 years and three months. 
Now, if you think about Grand Film when that took place, the 14th of June is 460 days ago. And I think that we have to ask ourselves, where is it likely that more Biggest Inquiry is going to fall in that scale, that timeline? 45 days, 13 years, three months. Are we going to be in one of those situations where everyone's so upset with the results? Because it's not an investigation in the sense of looking for a criminal prosecution. Is everyone going to be so upset that we're looking for an inquiry after the inquiry to look into the inquiry? Because I think you know that's going to happen if things keep going on the way they're going on. And it makes me think, and it makes me remember the young man who spoke to one of the council officers, I think it's the deputy councillor, Kim Taylor Smith, uh, straight after the massacre took place, quite emotional. And he said to him, you sort this out in eight weeks or I'll find you. Now that young man ended up with a community sentence and a fine, but those eight weeks have long gone. And like I said, families are still in emergency and temporary accommodation. We're no closer to justice. Corporate uh, people and companies that are responsible have not even issued proper statements, if any, to the inquiry. And the police are arresting down instead of up. People are going to jail, but no one involved in any of those 30 things that the, even the Daily Mail, for Christ's sake, the Daily Mail have highlighted. So what is the point of this inquiry? I'm not looking to be here 13 years later, kind of like with a Zimmer frame, still walking along the canal, reporting on more big shenanigans. Something has to change. And if it isn't going to be them, then I dare I say it, it has to be us and our approach to how we secure justice in these kind of scenarios. So I'm going to close and say as ever, be woke, be careful, and may the ancestors continue to guide and protect us. Asher.